Praise the Lord. Take your seats. Bring my Bible. Thank you. And my phone. Thank you. Quickly take your seats. Stay in the atmosphere. Don't talk to your neighbor now. This is between you and God. You're going to miss this if you don't receive tonight. I was so conflicted whether I should teach this message tonight. Because I want you to know, thank you, Pumi. I want you to know that God has got a special plan and purpose for each and every one of you. It is not God's plan that you would perish. I said, it's not God's plan for you to perish. It's God's plan for you to live a victorious life. Exceedingly, abundantly above. <laughs> so me, just keep it there. I like the pads. Thank you. Tonight I'm going to talk about for 10 minutes about know your enemy. Know your enemy. And I want you to know that the Bible says <clears throat> that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. This is not in the notes. I'm just going with it. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. In other words, Christians, my people, Christians, do not know how to fight the enemy because they don't have the knowledge. And so it goes on to say, and forgive me if I'm quickly looking at some notes as I was just looking at a couple of things. And there are many examples of congregation members that are destroyed. I mentioned this morning in the service that I've had so many people, my heart breaks after every service. I say to the team, I said, I'm so, my heart is so broken that so many people are living in such a destroyed situation, completely destroyed where the devil has just taken everything from that person. And I'm thinking, how would you, my natural mind says, how would you get out of this? Not possible, almost. But then I remember my God. In John 10, 10, the Bible says, the devil comes only to kill, to steal, and destroy. But I have come that you may, have, you may have life and life more abundantly. So it is God's plan for you not to be killed, not for you to be destroyed, and not to be stolen from. And here's how it really works. You see, when we get born again, or when we get delivered out of a situation, the Bible says that Spirits are cast out of you or um, the, the very thing that's oppressing you is lifted from you, which is a form of a spirit. And you are set free. That's the words that we use. But Jesus says more than that. And he warns again, just coming to the church for a quick touch and think it's like a one-armed bandit I hit the jackpot and now I'm okay because it's not. And the scripture I'm going to read you just now is Jesus speaking, not the apostle speaking, not the apostle Paul speaking, not Moses speaking, but Jesus is speaking. And he's warning us how to maintain our deliverance and how to stay free. Listen to what I'm saying. How to stay free in Jesus' name. It is not God's will for you to suffer. It is not God's will for you to go through discord. It is not God's will for you to lose everything. It is not God's will for your marriage to fail. It is not God's will for your business to fail in Jesus' name. I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Not a little bit of life, just barely hanging on life no, abundantly, more abundantly. I mean, abundantly is already yes, like too much, but more than too much. And if you're not living in it, you need to start living in it, child of God. So Jesus tells us as Christians, it is possible that a spirit can be cast out of a Christian. An unclean spirit. A demon but here then Jesus goes on in Matthew 12 
and he tells us what it is that we should do. And reading from the NRV, it says, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put into order. Then it goes out, goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. Coward the way the devil is. And they go in and they live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. I was speaking to somebody this week where it is becoming a trend amongst young people to consult uh, Sangomas. Because they are 22 years old and they don't have two cars and a triple story house. You are living in your own dream world. Good things takes time. Is it okay if I'm a little bit hard tonight? Can I preach a little bit harder? I just want to check. Young people, can I preach a little bit harder? It's a little bit qu quiet in the choir there. And you're thinking, the way that I can do it, because I'm not succeeding in business, I'm going to go to the Songoma, and the Songoma is going to give me these powers. And you know what, family? It's not the power of the Songoma. It's your fear. You're not believing in God. That's causing problems in your life. So let me break this scripture down for you. There is only one giver, and that's Jesus Christ. He gave his life. He came to this world. He paid the price. He wants to give you more than enough, more than you can think, more than you can imagine. Exceedingly, like Tim's story says, exceedingly abundantly above come on now if you get caught in that spirit of a songoma your life is over the devil will not let go you might have a short victory but I promise you you're going to pay and then you wonder why you're living in constant fear because that spirit will not let you go. And I'm here tonight to say to you, I can see it's now very quiet in this Roman Catholic church. I'm here tonight to say to you guys that you need to understand your authority in Christ. Greater is he that is in me than the devil that is in the world. Amen. Come on, greater, say this with me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Say that again, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Let me break it down. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest, find none. Then he says, he says, spirit can speak. I will return to my house from which I came and then I will come. He finds it empty, swept and put in order. And then he goes and takes it with him, seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So it shall be also with the wicked or this wicked, wicked generation. When you dabble into Sangomas and other spirits and not in the spirit of God. A wicked generation. Let me break it down for you. Ten things that an unclean spirit does. One, an unclean spirit can be cast out. I thought I would get a bigger amen there. An unclean spirit. This is Jesus speaking. It's in red in your Bible, Matthew 12. If you watch on your app, it maybe doesn't have a color. It's just white letters or whatever. Jesus said, an unclean spirit can be cast out. And tonight, the pastor is going to pray for you. If you've been consulting with mediums and doing all kinds of things, 
you need to cast that spirit out in Jesus' name and it will leave this place not attached to anyone here in the name of Jesus and by the authority of the name of Jesus. Secondly, an unclean spirit can move around. That's why we bind it and not to attach it to anybody else. So it might leave you and will move to a dry place. Number three, an unclean spirit does not find rest. We send you to a place. You shall not return here. You will not find rest, especially attach yourself to any other person in the name of Jesus. Not by my authority, but by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do you realize the power of the name? It's like when you, in the old days, I know you, you don't have it now, but in a couple of years ago, yeah, a couple of years ago, if you were to wanted to pay somebody, you would pay them by check, a piece of paper that is recognized by the bank, and you can fill an amount on there as long as you've got that money in the bank, and if the right signature is there, the right signature, the ball, the bank will see it and say, this is the right signature, the funds are available, I'm releasing it. I'm honoring the check. In the same way, when the Lord helps us and, 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 and heals people, and when we use the authority of the name, it is like signing a check, healing Jesus Christ. And when the Father sees it, He has to do it in the name of Jesus. There is authority. There's power in the name. Makes me think of a song. Number four. An unclean spirit can speak and think. It says to itself, hmm, I think I should go back. Number five. An unclean spirit can inspect that house and can make an assessment. He goes back, looks at the house, see that it is clean, but unoccupied. Unoccupied. So he makes an assessment. Mm -hmm. No word of God in here. Nice and clean. Nice to come back. No word of God here. They cast me out. They cleaned that house out. You've been, you're coming for prayer. That you, you, you've received your deliverance, your, 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 your temple, your body cleansed from that evil spirit. Nicely put in order. Do you know Jesus wants to deliver you? Yes. But then there's no filling it up with the word of God. And when the devil sees there's no word, remember what I said a couple of weeks ago, months ago, I preached on what is in the scripture. The scripture will make the place not unoccupied, but the scripture will make the house occupied. So when the demon comes and he inspects, but he sees that this place is full of the word of God, he departs from that place and returns no more. Because he cannot fight against the word. Amen. It's important to have the word in our hearts because lots of word, lots of faith. And I speak and out of the abundance of the heart, my mouth can speak. But if I have little faith or no faith, I can only speak what I remember. And the minute I start remembering, it's dangerous because I start misquoting the scripture. I've got to have it in my heart. He sees that it is clean and put in order after deliverance. Number seven, an unclean, come guys, worship team, an unclean spirit can get support to help him. So he sees, okay, it's nice and clean. But hey, I remember what happened the last time. They cast me out. I'm going to get seven others more wicked than me. An unclean spirit can return or spirits can return. Number nine, an unclean spirit can possess a person again. If the house is clean and set in order, 
But if there is the word of God in that house, it is like a gate. He cannot enter in because each time when he tries to enter in, the occupant, you, you can quote the scripture and say, devil, in the name of Jesus. And do you know when you quote that name, the name that is above all other names, the name that at when, when he returns, the Bible says when Jesus returns on that day, every knee will bow. Even the devil will bow. Sickness has to bow. And no, 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 no occupying that house, that house, that home will happen. Number 10, an unclean spirit can make your life worse than previously. So family, my heart breaks. Now, do you, now you know it. And when people come, my life is destroyed, Pastor Johnny. I'm saying because in my heart I'm thinking, you left the door open. You don't not fill it up with the word. There is no defense. In actual fact, it's so easy that he brings more wicked spirits with him. So this evening, I'm going to ask the praise and worship team. I think this is what God wants us to do. I'm going to ask us just to lead us in a worship. And then I'm going to ask you to come forward. Thank you for watching the Christian Family Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join our online community and join us live every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this with your friends. Thank you again for watching and God bless you.